Hi everyone, my name is Ali Asaria, and this is my co-founder, Tony Salomon. Um, for the last couple of years, like probably many of you, we've been heads down trying to study the internals of large language models. Um, and Tony and I, as, as mentioned, we've actually worked together for more than 20 years across multiple companies. And one of the things that we share in common is that we really like to nerd out on the details. Um, we're not the type of people who want to run large language models that would just want to talk to large language models on somebody else's APIs. We want to run them ourselves. We want to build computers and see what's inside. We want to play with the models, change them and modify them, sometimes even break them. And we want to do all of those things without a gatekeeper. Um, for us, to a certain degree, we feel like that's the real spirit of local AI. And so in that spirit, we imagine a world where anyone with access to a computer can do advanced things with large language models. But when we started on that lofty vision, what we found was that there's a big challenge and it wasn't what we expected. What we found was that the biggest reason why it's hard to do for the average person to do advanced things with large language models isn't because of hardware. The demo that we're gonna to show today, Tony's gonna to do it on his own laptop on battery, I think. Um, and what the other thing we found was it's not because of science or math. In fact, a lot of the code that runs the most popular large language models out there is actually simpler than a lot of the tools, is simpler than the code behind a lot of the tools we all use every day. What we found was that the biggest reason why it's hard to be productive with large language models for the average developer is because of the tooling. If any of you have worked with machine learning and large language models, you've probably all seen a wall of Python errors like the one we have on this screen before. Python, Conda issues, CUDA drivers, Python dependencies not working. We live in a world where we've taken research quality code and pushed it to production, and it makes it a hassle for everybody. And so what we found out was in our goal to make LLMs accessible to everyone, we had to solve two problems. One, we had to solve the user interface problem, but we also had to solve the reliability problem. And so with the support of Mozilla and the Builders program, we've been working on this problem for the last number of months, and we'd love to show you where we are right now. Let me show you what Transformer Lab can do. So Ali mentioned some of the tooling, the setup can be a real nightmare. Um, with Transformer Lab, we have a one-click installer that figures out your operating system, your hardware, and then it goes ahead and tries to figure out exactly what you need on your system to, uh, to run all of the tools and plugins that we support. Okay, so we're up and running now. So as Ali kind of gave away, I'm gonna try something a little crazy. We're going to fine tune a model on my laptop live um, without a battery. I don't know if that was a good idea or not, but it worked <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, we'll come up with a task. We're actually trying to get something done here. So uh, a common thing people are trying to do is to take a large language model and teach it some niche topic so that I can answer questions on that topic. And the topic I'm gonna do today is touch rugby, which is a sport I know nothing about, but uh, it turns out the large language models also don't know anything about it. But I have a data set with all the rules, so uh, it should work as a great example. So the first thing we need to do is start with a base model. Uh, Transformer Lab has a curated list of recommended models you can choose from. We, uh, we let you download from Hugging Face. You can import models from elsewhere on your hard drive if you're working, uh, if you're already developing those sorts of things. Uh, I'm going to use this one here. This is Llama 3.2. It's a, an MLX version specifically uh, to run on a MacBook, so it should be nice and fast. I just clicked run. It's already up and running. All right, let, let's go. What, what, what was the question? Uh, tell me a dad joke. <laughs> okay, here's one. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Why? I don't know why, because he is outstanding in his field. All right, we got to train this thing. It's, it's not doing a good job. Um, so Transformer Lab has a, a fully featured set of tools for, for doing inference and interacting with models. I'm not going to show that now. If you want to check it out, come by the booth later. I, I'm going to get to the training today, but reg engine, tool use, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to use something called batch query here just quickly. This lets you run a bunch of prompts. This is sort of like mini eval vibe check just to quickly see how a model's doing with something and you can quickly run some queries over and over again. I'm asking it about um, possession and touch rugby. It's wild. Like what is the definition of a try and touch rugby? Our rugby union match starts with a scrum. I, I don't know what it's talking about. So great. This is what Transformer Lab is good at. So here's our uh, training UI. Uh, 
you know, again, this is uh, a cross-platform, cross-architectures. I think this is the only UI that lets you do full, fully featured training like this. Uh, yeah, across all of those things. Over here, you can see that we support uh, numerous plugins, supervised fine-tuning, preference training. There's an Apple MLX LoRa trainer specifically for this. But today, I'm going to use something called a recipe. And a recipe is just a way to save a training workflow and then share it. And it kind of gives you a starting point. You can either use it out of the box or, or you can tweak it afterwards. So I'm going to add the touch rugby. Uh, let, let's just run it since uh, I got a minute to go here. So all right, it is up and running. Great. So that should take about a minute to run. So I'll show you a bit of the UI in the meantime. So here's the recipe I just talked about. OK, we got uh, Llama 3.2 is our model. Here's the data that we're training on. So you can see a bunch of questions, a bunch of answers. Um, How is that data translated and presented to the model? We show that down here. This is the data coming in. And this over here is the chat template uh, so that the model is able to answer questions. For those of you who want to get into it, uh, UI to uh, uh, set LoRa parameters and, and all the other settings here, but we're just going with the defaults. All right, let's see how he's doing, 40%. I forgot to stop the model. Let's do that. That might actually uh, help this go a little faster. Uh, and then you can track uh, the progress of your train. So we use TensorBoard, and uh, you can see some data on how that's going. There's a, a loss function. There's a validation loss down here you can look at. Looks like things are going in the right direction. And if you're really hardcore and you want to stare directly into the matrix, we actually give you the raw output of everything that the plugin is doing here. OK. How are you doing? 100%. Great. OK, let's go try this thing out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to eject our old model here. And I'm going to see if we spit out a new model. Sorry, touch spelt with a U. Did I say, nope, not two U's. You still have to know how to spell. OK, run it. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll just go back here and run a bunch of batch queries on it and see what it does. And right away, uh, yeah, OK, this seems fine. It knows what possession is. It has more uh, uh, terse answers, uh, more concise. It's actually talking about the sport. That's good. You can do this a few times. It seems like it's having trouble with the last question, so maybe we got to uh, uh, iterate with our tuning a bit. But hey, this is what you can do on a MacBook in one minute right now. That's <laughs> kind of impressive. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, so we're so happy to be able to say that everything you just saw today, the application is freely available for anyone to download. But because of the support of Mozilla and learning from the spirit of Mozilla, everything, all the code behind everything you saw is also open source. Um, we really think that the idea of making large language models accessible to everyone on their own hardware is one of the most important missions of our generation. If you share that vision, we were told that if we're looking to raise money, we're not supposed to say that we're raising money, so we're not looking to raise money. Uh, but we would love to collaborate, and so we'd love to meet you at our booth. Please join our Discord, um, star us on GitHub. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.